We had a mixed day in the S&P 500 yesterday and with earnings taking place we're expecting a lot of volatility. In fact today our focus is on SoFi Technologies that just reported their earnings to the market only minutes ago. Now we can see so far this is in the pre-market, it does look positive up around 4-5%. to We're going to uncover what is going on, it is now going to be trading at a new 52 week high. Is it still undervalued and whether or not we should consider adding to our portfolio? Now we want to just draw your attention, this is the investor presentation that was only released minutes ago and we'll be honest, a spoiler alert, very strong earnings. They had a double beat on their top line revenue as well as their earnings per share. Now first things first, one metric closely looked at by the market are the members edition and absolutely phenomenal. They have added 756,000 new members. That is an increase of 35% and we can in fact see which now is around 9.4 million members. So growth looking very strong. This is what the market wanted to see and so far delivered. You could argue growth is starting to slow down moving from the 40s to the 30s. So that is one piece of consideration to take. But as we said, a double beat and members edition is looking strong. Now that growth doesn't stop there at the members. When we look at new products editions, 1.1 million in this quarter, and that is taking the total to nearly 13.7 million, growth of 31% when you compare it to the same quarter on a year on year basis, or as we can see here, 37% if you do want to exclude the digital asset accounts. So market aren't just looking at the top line or the headline. In fact, they also want to boil down to some very important metrics for SoFi and they have surely delivered. As we can see, growth in members, growth in products and growth as well in the Galileo accounts. We can see 17% as an increase. So yes, you could argue growth is starting to slow down right across the board. But nonetheless, SoFi is still delivering on what the market wanted. These growth numbers are in fact higher than what Wall Street themselves had expected. In terms of their top line, 30% growth for the quarter, 689 million. That is a record breaking revenue for them. And in terms of the growth, 30%, that is very good when you compare to the two previous quarters. They didn't get that high, 22 to 26%. And we also are seeing growth in the quarterly adjusted EBITDA, the earnings before interest tax depreciation amortization with a 27% margin. Again, much better than the previous two. So this does look to be very strong. Then when we look on a trading 12 month basis, this is what we ideally want to see with companies. We want to see their top line increasing. We want to see their EBITDA increasing and something that we do love about this company. If you are a regular viewer, you know this company has made historical losses. Well, as we can see for Q4 on a trailing 12 month basis, we are now looking at a net income 214 million. Then we move on to how they actually performed and in comparison to the guidance, well, 689 million top line as we just referenced, that is better than the upper end of the Q3 guidance. The same to be said for the EBITDA 186, their upper guidance was 165, their margin also looking very good, 27% better than the 26% initially anticipated and their gap net income, love to see this, in fact nearly 50% higher than the upper ends of the variance at 45 million. We also see EPS looking very strong, 5 cents per share when they were anticipating around 4 cents. Now the good news for SoFi investors for the company and management doesn't stop there, they've also now increased their guidance for the full year FY24. As we can see, top line growth, they were thinking 17 to 19%. They now estimate between 22 to 23%. They have in fact kept the EBITDA margin the same at 25%, as we can see from the prior guidance, but they are now increasing their gap net income from 175 to 185 to 204 to 206. And they've also quite significantly, if you look at it from a percentage base, have increased the EPS 9 to 10 cents to 11 to 12. And the final metric where we do also see quite some significant growth, their tangible book value growth, 800 to 1,000, now anticipating 1,000 to 1,050. So very bullish for SoFi shareholders. When we do go back, we can see even though it is coming down a little bit, it is still up in the pre-market 3%. Will be interesting to see where this goes when the market opens. 
And for a quick analysis of this company, well, look, over the last year, it is up around 61%. We still do know when you look at it from a five-year perspective, it hasn't got as high as we saw around February 2021, around the $26 mark. So if they continue this track record of outperforming, of increasing guidance, it could be very, very soon for when we see this new all-time high. As we said, when the market opens, we will see a new 52-week high. We do get one buy rating from Seeking Alpha. Bear in mind, 4.4 isn't too far off the 4.5, where we would see a strong buy rating. Wall Street give it a hold, but even Quant with their hold of 3.47 isn't far off the buy signal at 3.5. Now, we have typically discussed on this channel the very high forward P of 103, but as we will show you, this is expected to come down significantly. And the fact that we just got their Q3 results, which was a beat, we can now officially say over the last four quarters, they have a 100% track record of outperforming analyst targets. And over the next three quarters, they are still expecting massive growth as we just have seen, they have in fact increased their guidance. And if they do hit the December 2025, full year EPS, the forward P will come down to 44. Whether or not you believe that is reasonable for a growing company like SoFi is something to consider. We are also just going to run through some of the metrics of this company. Now, free cash flow, as we always say, we want to see growth over the longer term. What we actually get here is it's been negative for quite some time, but over the next 12 months, this is expected to be positive at 54 cents. So again, something to bear in mind. And we do like it on this channel, looking at companies that are going negative and are just turning positive, as that is when we do see the majority of the share price appreciation. Sales growth looking very good over the last few years in terms of the growth. And as we saw in terms of the guidance, they are expecting 22 to 23% for the full year of FY24, which is still lower than FY23's 36%. So remember, whether you factor into your margin of safety or not, these are questions you need to consider in terms of the growth moving forwards for SoFi Technologies. In terms of a numerical spaces, well, it has more than four times over the last few years, 510 million to 2.07 in 2023. And they do expect between 2.5 to 2.6 for the full year of FY24. Now, when we take a look at essentially the net debt to EBITDA, remember this shows us the strength of the balance sheet, earnings before interest, tax depreciation, amortization. We get 5.27, which is very high, higher than the three that we want to see. Around 1.53, though, more accurately on a trailing 12 month, 1.15 in terms of anticipated over the next year. This shows us the balance sheet does look strong. Remember, this metric correlates to the balance sheet. And in fact, these are the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. Now, we will look at their balance sheet shortly as well. But right now, we just want to let you know that we have released our latest free weekly article. We drop one of these every single Monday morning. We look at companies that are massively undervalued that we believe deserve your attention, as well as what's gone on in the market over the last few days. So do click on the pinned comment below, sign up, and you can read straight away. You will also be able to gain access of 36 undervalued stocks for the month of October, where we talk about a lot of information, the upside that Wall Street themselves see, and we flag those that sit within our own portfolio. And for this month only, you will be able to get 22 undervalued stocks that Wall Street themselves believe have the most upside in the S&P. So click on the pinned comment below, sign up, and you can read straight away. Now, just a refresher in terms of insider ownership, we see around 2.6%. 139 million worth of sales over the last year but we do also see some buys during the same time period although very small in comparison in terms of the more recent quarter we do get a sale of 96,000. q3 again we see some selling as well as q2 and for full transparency we can in fact show you that the evp was the most recent sale 21st of October, 9,308 shares, netting just under $100,000. You probably think this is quite trivial, but remember as well, we don't believe here that insider selling is a bearish signal. Institutional update as well, 38%, 73 million worth of sales over the last 12 months. We get 10 times more the amount of buys during the same time period. And we can also see pretty much in every quarter in quite some time, institutions have been buying more shares of SoFi than they have been selling and also as we can see in the more recent q3 as always though do your own due diligence never copy what insiders or institutions do now again just a reminder their top line revenue growth has been very strong as we said around four times growth over the last few years 
but we also want to flag or reinforce what we mentioned about the bottom line net income. They have been loss making for quite some time, but we do anticipate for the full year of FY24, as we can in fact see here, they expect a net income on a gap basis of 204 to 206. Very, very good news for shareholders. First time we are seeing in quite some while. Then we want to show you their balance sheet cash versus total debt for a quick health check. Cash has been increasing over the period, around 325 million in FY 2018, in the latest quarter around 2.3 billion. So that's a good sign they do hold a lot more cash than they did just a few years ago. And in terms of total debt, what we do like about this company, their debt levels have been decreasing. 6.6 .6 billion in 2018, 3.2 in the latest quarter. And remember, it's not something we typically see on this channel, companies that can increase their cash while decreasing their total debt. Now some gradings for those that missed the more recent episode, valuation a C plus. Now as we've already mentioned, in terms of the forward P, they do trade very, very high. So you are paying a premium for this company, whether or not you believe it deserves a premium and what level that is something we can get to in our own valuation. But again, as we mentioned, over the next year, they do expect this forward P to come down massively with the growth in EPS. We then get the growth grade where it's an A, year on year revenue around 30%, much better than the sector median. Forward looking, as we saw, around 22 to 26%. That is, again, a lot better than the sector. So, yes, maybe you could argue they deserve a premium, but at what rate? Again, something we need to factor. Although their profitability, while it does look good at 82% in terms of the gross margin, which is significantly better than the sector at 61, their bottom line is negative on a trailing 12-month basis, as, in fact, we did just see over the last year they are loss-making. But in 2024, they are expecting for the full year positive. So this will change and that will be very good news for shareholders. But we also have to flag over the last 12 months, their cash from operations is negative 2.68 billion. Again, lots to consider. Quick recap then, a buy rating from Seeking Alpha, a double hold from Wall Street and Quant, C plus on valuation, A on growth with an F on profitability. Now we also want to flag in comparison to others in the industry. When we do look over the last year, Pretty much the majority have done fairly well, as we can see here, positive. But what we notice, though, is so far the second best, and we expect this to be even better at the market open. So a good sign. However, over the last five years, given this share price has come down, as we saw, it is up only 6.77%. So if you're a long-term shareholder, maybe this isn't one that is too great to see. But just remember that the past performance does not relate to the future, so they could form much worse, in fact, but they could also perform significantly better. And as always, we'd like to just show you in comparison to the S&P, SoFi over the last year has significant. When we look over the last five years, no surprises from what we've just shown you. It has massively underperformed. As always, though, do have some consideration for looking at alternatives like ETFs that track the S&P. Now we're going to jump into our intrinsic value. As always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. So our intrinsic value of $15, we ran it through the DCF model and we're just going to show you how we got that today. We have the free cash flow year on year, the average growth rate now fairly skewed given it's negative, but remember they are anticipating positive in 2024. Now we've gone for 10% today, given their results, we have moved on to the higher grade, but as we will come to show you the different rates, 10% then with the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flow and terminal value, add to it with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by the shares outstanding, and as we can see, 1536, indicating 28% upside. Now remember these numbers are subjective and you can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below, running through your own numbers, whether it's for SoFi or any that you wish, but we'll show you at the 8% for transparency, it would give you the intrinsic value of 1347, indicating 12% upside, and at the 6% point, it would essentially indicate right now downside of 2%. So we're going to take the 10% through, but you have seen that transparency of where these numbers are coming from. And this gives us our intrinsic value at $15. We also have analysts that have upgraded their target for SoFi to $15 over the next year, indicating upside of 25%. As always, though, on the channel, we like to do a margin of safety. At 10%, we execute on this if it meets the three golden criteria. 
wide moat, strong financial metrics, and good forward-looking data. If you believe this in today's episode, will a buy at 1383? Then we keep going till it's near the current trading price, and we see in today's episode sitting between 20 to 25% MOS. But remember, this is based on essentially 10% growth rate moving forwards. So 20, 25% MOS, 25% upside from Wall Street. Is this one you are looking to buy? Is this one, in fact, you are looking to sell, or maybe just sitting and holding? We also notice here though, just something we want to mention, that if SoFi is to get to the level of PayPal, then the SoFi price will be around $67. Just a fun exercise that we did. Whether or not you believe that, just something to take note. As always, if you enjoyed the content, value was provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. Don't forget to sign up to the free weekly newsletter below and come and join us in the Patreon where we do talk about our weekly buys and sells. As always, have a great day and we'll see you all on the next one.